हेलो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट मनी टुडे मनी इंटरेस्ट देर इज अ लॉट टू इट देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड सिंपल इंटरेस्ट एंड देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट नो वॉट इज सिंपल इंटरेस्ट एंड वॉट इज कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इफ आई गिव यू अ लोन से फॉर अ ईयर एंड आई चार्ज ओके सिंपल इंटरेस्ट देन आई से ओके इफ आई गिव यू अ लैक ऑफ रुपीज एंड आई से टेन परसेंट सो एट द एंड ऑफ द ईयर वॉट डू आई टेक फैक्ट फ्रॉम यू वन लैख टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज फॉर टू ईयर्स सो आई टेक बैक वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फॉर यू लेट टू गेट कंपाउंड इंटरेस्ट इफ आई गिव यू अ लैक ऑफ रुपीज एंड एट द एंड ऑफ टू ईयर्स आई से एट द सेम इंटरेस्ट रेट से टेन परसेंट आई टेक आउट हाउ मच फॉर द फर्स्ट ईयर इट बी सेम टेन थाउजेंड for the second year the interest will also be calculated on that 10000 which will add another 1000 so the amount to be repaid is 121000 this is how compounding makes us count the interest on the interest as well which makes it slightly expensive let's see how exactly the formula works out now for the simple interest the formula is interest amount is equal to principal multiplied by the rate of interest multiplied by the time duration for compound interest it changes it's not the interest part it's the total amount repaid which is equal to principal open brackets 1 plus the rate of interest and whole thing to the power of time now time here is not the number of years but number of periods for which the rate has to be compounded let's say for 2 years if we say and the compounding is happening annually so it will be 2 years so the power will be 2 and the rate will be for 1 year but if say for 2 years but the compounding is happening every 6 months then the rate will be halved because the rate will be of 6 months so if it is 10% here it will be 5% and the number of time period or the power here will become 4 because there are four periods in a 2 year gap of every 6 months let's see how banks treat you now when you take a loan from a bank and when you put a fixed deposit into a bank let's take the fixed deposit case first so you are putting a fixed deposit of 10000 rupees at the rate of 5% or 6% in a bank now 10000 at the rate of 6% at the end of one year how much will you get 600 rupees as interest let's take a loan from a bank of 10000 rupees at the same interest rate of 6% now 6% interest rate they will charge you interest on a monthly basis so they won't give you an annual interest of 600 they'll say we will charge you interest 6% 600 rupees divided by 12 50 rupees per month so for the first month the amount will be 50 rupees at the end of one month the principal becomes 1 uh, 10050 rupees now the interest is charged on this 50 as well and this goes on compounding for the 12 months so what you end up paying to the bank at the same interest rate for the same amount is higher than what you get from the bank so the more frequent the compounding the higher becomes the overall amount this is how banks charge you let's take another example a father left a will of rupees 35 lakhs between his two daughters the daughters were aged at 8 and a half and 16 such that they might get equal amounts when each of them reach an age of 21 year the original amount is 35 lakhs that the father is putting in and it has been kept in a bond with a simple interest of 10% so 35 lakhs has been kept in a bank with an interest of 10% the first daughter or the elder daughter who is at 16 will get that amount at the end of 5 years because she is already 16 the second daughter will get it after 12 and a half years but what the first daughter gets at the end of 5 years will be same as what the second daughter gets at the end of 12 and a half years so let's break this 35 lakhs first let's break it into two parts one is x the other is 35 lakhs minus x so x goes to the elder daughter so x into 0.1 because that is the interest rate multiplied by 5 years now 5 years this is the interest part that she will earn on her amount plus the principal so x into 0.1 into 5 plus x becomes the amount that the elder daughter gets the younger daughter 35 lakh minus x this is the principal that she will get plus again 35 lakh minus x into 10% into 12 and a half years now these both will become equal solving this we get x equal to 21 lakhs which means that the elder daughter right now has 21 lakhs and the younger daughter right now has 14 lakhs which become equal when they are actually getting the amount yes, let's take another example the population of a town was 3600 3 years back and now it is 
if the population has been growing at a compounding rate every year, then what is the growth rate? And second is, what will be the population after 3 years? So, let us look at the first part. The current population is 4800, 3 years ago it was 3600. So, the principal becomes 3600 and right now it is 4800. What is the rate of growth? Let us take into a formula 4800 equal to 3600 multiplied by 1 plus r upon 100. Now, 3 years, so it is 3 term periods. Solving it, we get r equal to 10 percent. So, the rate of growth is actually 10 percent. But if we have to find out the population after 3 years, why do we need to calculate the rate of growth? We do not need it. Why? Because let us put the same way x is the, for, uh, the population after 3 years. So, x equal to 4800 into 1 plus r upon 100 to the power 3. If you look at the first equation and the last equation, we find that the last part is same 1 plus r upon 100 to the power 3. So, both of them becomes equal. So, x upon 4800 is equal to 4800 upon 3600 which gives me x as 6400. Now, this is how by ratio we can combine it and find it easily. Let us take another example. Upon investing rupees 3000 for 2 years in 2 separate schemes, one of simple interest and another of compound interest, the difference in interest comes to rupees 30 at the end of 2 years. Find the rate of interest. Now, 2 years, the simple interest will obviously be lesser than the compound interest, that is what we learnt. Now, let us compare. Now, at the end of 2 years in compound interest, the total amount will be 3000 multiplied by 1 plus r upon 100 whole square. And what will be the princ uh, what will be the simple interest? 3000 into 2 into r upon 100. Now, this is only the interest part. Now, the beauty is in compound interest, it gives you the total amount, whereas in simple interest, it gives you the only the uh, interest amount, not the principal amount. So, we will have to add the principal here. So, 3000 into 2 into r by 100 plus the principal which is 3000. So, these two are the different interest that we get and the difference out of it is 30. So, let us see. If we expand the first one, we get 3000 plus 3000 into 2 r upon 100 because a plus b whole square is a square plus 2 ab plus b square. So, 3000 into 2 r upon 100 and the third part will be 3000 into r square upon 100 square. So, if you see closely the difference in the two, the 3000 gets knocked off, the middle part also gets knocked off, the only thing remaining is 3000 into r upon 100 whole square. Now, this is the difference which is 30 rupees. So, equating we can clearly get r is equal to 10. So, the rate of interest here is 10 percent. This is how simple interest and compound interest have to be calculated. But at the same time, we will have to keep in mind the difference in their formulas. One gives you the entire amount and other gives you only the interest amount.